So, Robert, why, why this debate? Why does this one intrigue you in particular? Because I know it does. Well, I, I kind of got interested in this topic by reading a, a book about science. Uh, it was by the Astronomer Royal of England, a man called Martin Rees, and the book was called Just Six Numbers. And it was about uh, six physical constants that were imprinted in the early universe in the first 100 millionth of a second after the Big Bang. And these constants express ideas like the strength of uh, gravity, the strength of the bond that, that keeps uh, the nucleus of atoms together, the uniformity of that initial uh, fireball. And if any of those six numbers was much larger or much smaller, we would really not have a universe. Either uh, stars and galaxies wouldn't have formed, or there'd be no elements as uh, complicated as carbon and oxygen, or the Big Bang would have been succeeded by a big crunch into a, a black hole in which all matter would have disappeared. And when you think about this, or at least for me, I, I thought, could this be just chance, or is there some uncanny intelligence at work in this early design? And, and for, the, for what we're doing here tonight, why is this not, you know, this has been going on for a long time, this conversation, why is this not just the Scopes monkey trial all over again? Well, because I think this conversation should be much more sophisticated than one dealing with the literal truth of something in the Old Testament. And in addition, of course, uh, science has moved on uh, so much since th th that time. So I think this is going to be a very, uh, a much more uh, uh, subtle and interesting th debate than that one might have been. I'm sure it's going to be, because we're going to bring out our debaters so that you can meet them, and we'll let the debate get started. Thanks very much. Robert Rosenkranz. Let's move the chairs. Two of you are in the dark, and I don't mean that metaphorically. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. All right. In fairness, we have to let the other side do the same thing. I just want to invite uh, one more round of applause for Robert Rosenkrantz for making this possible. Isaac Newton invented calculus, and he believed in God. Max Planck was the father of uh, quantum physics, also a believer. Copernicus, the solar system, he had the faith, and Galileo and Francis Bacon and Pascal, they all believed. What they also all had in common is that none of them was born within 150 years of us. Today, three out of every five scientists, knowing what they know, say that they can't really buy into the concept of God. Science refutes God, they would say. Really? So then what about the two out of five scientists who do believe in God and they actually know the same stuff? It sounds like the makings of a great debate, so let's get on to it. Yes or no to this statement, science refutes God. A debate from Intelligence Squared US. I'm John Donvan. We have four superbly qualified debaters who will be arguing for and against that motion, science refutes God. Our debate goes in three rounds, and then the audience votes to choose a winner, and only one side wins. On the side arguing for the motion, science refutes God, Lawrence Krauss, a theoretical physicist and director of the Origins Project at Arizona State University. His partner is Michael Shermer. He is a founding publisher of Skeptic Magazine and a columnist for Scientific American. On the side arguing against the motion that science refutes God, Dinesh D'Souza, he is the best-selling author of What's So Great About Christianity and director of the documentary 2012, Obama's America. And his partner is Ian Hutchinson. Ian Hutchinson is the professor of nuclear science and engineering at Massachusetts Institute of Technology.
Let's meet our debaters. Our motion is Science Refutes God. And welcome first to argue in support of the motion, Lawrence Krauss. Oh, that was confusing. You are eager. Uh, but Lawrence, I first want to chat with you just, okay. just, just a moment. Um, so I want to tell folks, you are a uh, theoretical physicist. Your research uh, interests have included uh, particle physics, dark matter, neutrino astrophysics, which is kind of easy stuff for all of us. Um, you, you, also, you, you um, like to push buttons, and you, uh, you, you wrote a book called Forget Jesus, The Stars Died So That You Could Be Here Today, which, which doesn't sound very polite. <laughs> Do, do you think that's provocative? Uh, slightly, yeah. <laughs> well, I think, um, I think provoking people and ridicule and satire is incredibly important in the world today. It's that nothing should be above ridicule because it gets people to think, and, and least of all, religion. And your partner is? Michael Shermer. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Shermer. Michael, you are the founder of uh, Skeptics, uh, Skeptic Magazine and the Skeptic Society. Um, you were not always skeptical uh, on this issue. You, as, uh, as a teenager, you were a born-again Christian, and then you switched to the other team. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're what my eighth-grade nun would call a very brazen and naughty boy. <laughs> well, I'd be happy to talk to her about it uh, for you, if you like. But uh, yeah, passed, I was a born-again. She's passed on, which I think would go to the other yeah. side. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I was a born-again uh, evangelical. I went uh, knocking on door-to-doors to tell people about Jesus. And then later, when I became a born-again atheist, I went back to those same houses and knocked on their doors, and <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> All right, our motion is science refutes God. We have two debaters arguing against this motion. I'd like to introduce the first, ladies and gentlemen, Dinesh D'Souza. Dinesh, you're a best-selling author and the director of 2016 Obama's America, the second highest grossing political documentary of all time. Um, you have debated this issue uh, a number of times. You've been on stages uh, uh, arguing against atheists a lot. Um, and a lot of times they say that science refutes God, but you came out with a book called uh, God Forsaken. And in a way you turn this argument on its head, how? Well, I think science is a, can be a tool to help us understand God. And uh, so far from science refuting God, I see science as a wonderful instrument for helping us learn about the world and thus learning about its creator. And your partner is? My partner is Ian Hutchinson. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Hutchinson. <laughs> Ian, uh, Ian Hutchinson, you are a professor of nuclear science and engineering at MIT. Your contributions to science include, and I take this from your biography uh, online at MIT, they include... The first observations of polarized tokamak electron cyclotron radiation and development of diagnostics and thermal and non-thermal electronic distributions based on it. So you're that guy? <laughs> what, are, what are you doing here? Well, I, I guess that is the question, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but, but, but more seriously, um, I'm a scientist and I'm also a Christian. I think both are very important parts of uh, the way that we understand the world, and I think that's why this debate is so important. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you, our live audience, act as our judges. We ask you before the debate has ended to vote twice, once before you've heard the arguments and once again after you've heard the arguments, and the team whose numbers have moved by the highest percentage will be declared our winner. So we would like to register the preliminary vote. If you go to the keypads at your seat, set of numbers, one through three, and if you agree with the motion at this point, science refutes God, we want you to push number one. If you disagree, push number two. And if you're undecided or agnostic, <laughs> push number three. And if you feel that you've pushed a number in error, just correct it and the system will lock in your last vote. And we're gonna hold the result of this first vote until the end of the debate. When you vote the second time, we'll compare the two numbers. And again, the team whose numbers have moved by the highest percentage will be declared our winner. All right. 
So on to round one, opening statements from each debater in turn. Our motion is Science Refutes God, and here to debate first in support of this motion, Lawrence Krauss. He is the director of the Origins Project and professor of, of physics at the School of Earth and Space Exploration at Arizona State University. He is an also, also an author of the best-selling book, a, let me do that again so that it's clean for the radio broadcast, because I really want to help you sell this book. Yeah, you, you, better, you can take all the time you want, Mr. <laughs> He is also the author of the best-selling book, A Universe from Nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, Lawrence Krauss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I actually wore this T-shirt for the subject of the debate. Um, <laughs> and it's the center of the debate, and it's clear. The motion is science refutes God. And Michael and I have the distinct advantage here of arguing in favor of the motion because, in fact, we have evidence, reason, logic, rationality, and empirical methods on our side, whereas their opponents have vague hopes and fears. And uh, they're arguing in favor of a motion that's hanging on for its existence by mere shreds of emotional and ideological spaghetti, much like this type provided by the flying spaghetti monster, one of the many equally irrational gods which science provides no support for. But I first want to begin by clarifying the nature of the motion, because the motion isn't science disproves God, it's science refutes God. And that's very important, because you can't disprove a notion that's basically vague and unfalsifiable. I could not, I, there's no way to disprove the notion that God didn't create all of us 15 seconds ago with the memories of, of the amusing comments we heard before that. There's no way we can disprove that. Okay, and and it, that's really important to recognize that those kind of unfalsifiable notions are unfalsifiable, as I say. But we can ask, is it rational to expect that that's likely? And tonight I want to emphasize that 500 years of science have demonstrated that God, that vague notion, is not likely. It's irrational to believe in God. Now, to refute God means refuting several claims. One that are all based on faith, not evidence. One, that God is necessary. Two, that there is evidence for God. And three, that that belief is rational. And the point is that the progress of science has shown over and over and over again that all the answers to all those three questions are no. No, no, no. Now, my own scientific field is cosmology, and uh, that's a study of the origin and evolution of the universe as a whole. And it's where science and religion sort of confront each other, and creation myths have abounded throughout human history, and science confronts those creation myths. And we'll talk about that, I'm sure, at some point in the, in, in the debate. But I want to point out that our opponents, I, I'm pretty sure, are going to argue first that one aspect of science that supports, perhaps, the belief in God is this notion that the universe is apparently fine-tuned for life. I hear that a lot. And because uh, it was fine-tuned so life could exist, that is a remarkable and, in fact, cosmic misunderstanding because it's the same kind of misunderstanding that led people to believe in special creation for life on Earth before Darwin. It looked like everything was designed for the environment in which it lived. But what Darwin showed us was that a simple proposition, namely that there's genetic variation among a population combined with natural selection, meant that you didn't need supernatural shenanigans. That, in fact, all the diversity of life on Earth could arise from a single life form by natural law. And he didn't know, he, what he showed was it was plausible based on the evidence. He didn't know about DNA, he didn't know about uh, the details of genetic replication, but he showed it was plausible. And as I'll say, that's where we're at now as far as the understanding of the 